Espresso is a complicated beast, and even though its name is indicative of speed, there's still a lot going on in that short time frame. More or less, every variable you deal with in brewing all other forms of coffee is accounted for. Grind size, water temperature, dose, distribution, yield, extraction, and I might even be forgetting some. But one variable that's unique to espresso is the application of high pressures, and it seems, at least traditionally, 9 bar is the agreed upon ideal. And now with many modern machines adopting more control in that realm, I thought I'd dig more into this topic and see how a variety of pressures affects a coffee's flow, flavor, and extraction. And as some of you may already know, there's still a lot of questions and in some circles doubt and debate that lower pressures can create something that even resembles espresso as we know it. So in this video, I'm going to put the fabled nine bars up against eight, seven, six, five, four, and three to see how they all perform side by side. But before we get into all that espresso and pressure goodness, a quick word from this video's sponsor, Stand Art Magazine. Are you still looking for that perfect gift for a coffee lover who already has all the toys? Well, a Stand Art subscription may just be the answer you're looking for. Jam-packed with insightful and well-written articles, beautiful design and stunning photography, Stand Art makes the perfect sidekick to a tasty cup of coffee. But there's even more to sweeten that deal. Every issue comes with a sample of coffee from some of the world's best roasters, and a money-back guarantee. Just head over to standartmag.com slash Prometheus or the direct link in my description, select buy a gift, put in a lucky person's contact info, a custom greeting, and choose the day you want your gift delivered to their inbox, and bam, you're the hero of the holidays. Or just treat yourself. It's been a long year and you deserve it. In order to keep all these tests on as even of a playing field as possible, I'll be doing all of them with the same coffee, the same grinder, and the same espresso machine. For the coffee, I chose a single origin. It's a naturally processed Ethiopian by Dark Horse. As I think when a lot of people are talking about making adjustments to lower pressures, they often refer to their effects on lighter, single origin coffees. And even in my personal experience, I've been brewing on almost exclusively six bars for a couple years now as I found the results in the cup, just generally speaking, less punchy or acidic, which opened up a whole lot more flavor clarity on those more nuanced, lighter roasted, and uniquely processed single origins. And of course, with that said, I also think these qualities translated into the more traditional, nutty and chocolatey flavored coffees as well. To brew the coffee, I'll be using the Lelite Bianca V3 and utilizing its reliable, consistent, and easily adjustable rotary pump which allows me to rule out any inaccuracies or having to make on-the-fly adjustments using the paddle. All the shots will be ground on the DF83 using SSP high uniformity burrs. The shots will use 18 grams of coffee in the standard Lelite IMS basket and aimed for a 36 gram yield in 25 seconds. And of course, when it comes to taste, those results are based on my personal perception of flavor. Since there's a lot of pressures and data to get to, let's just dive right in at 9 bars. And if you want to skip to the end and see what my final thoughts and takeaways of all these tests are, you can jump ahead to the final thoughts, which should be down here somewhere. When it comes to the flow, the pressure all at once did result in a high amount of channels, and they occurred throughout the entire shot. In the cup, it had a lot of body, a creamy mouthfeel, and a nice crema coverage. It was a little bright on the start, but with a decent balance, Overall, it did lack some complexity and a little harsh in the middle, but a nice finish. On 8 bar, the flow, although it ran a little fast and loose to begin with, it did hold together through most of the shot with only a little spraying channel in the final seconds. The espresso itself has a medium to high body and nice crema coverage. It has some upfront acidity, but not too intense. The mid range has less sweetness than the 9 bar shot, but was more complex with only a slightly bitter tinge to the finish. When it comes to the 7 bar flow, it had a surprising amount of channels in the early to mid range of the shot. But despite its extraction defects, this was the best cup so far. A very pleasant texture and acidity, a lot of upfront sweetness, very minimal bitterness, lending to its flavor clarity and a nice clean finish. The 6 bar shot was the cleanest flow yet, with no obvious channels until the last few seconds. It was also very close to the previous shot in terms of cup quality. A nice full texture, slightly more lively but still pleasant acidity, a good balance but a little less sweetness. It had some decent clarity and a clean finish with just a slight bit of dryness. 
The flow on both 5 and 4 bars were very similar with little to no channels and a cup score only one point apart. Both were very sour and acidic throughout. This unpleasantness essentially covered up any redeeming flavors in the cup. The crema was thin and dissipated quickly. Both were what I would consider a sink shot. And finally, when it comes to the three bar, the flow began a little wobbly, but held together and rounded out being rather clean. As expected, and much like the other low pressure shots, the crema was thin and dissipated quickly, which lends to its lack of texture. But surprisingly, the shot was lively with a decent balance and complexity. Okay, so there is a lot to digest here, and admittedly, some of this stuff is well above my pay grade. I wish I could tell you with any sort of confidence why some pressures taste better than others, but the best guess I have is the mix of pressure and flow changes what and how the compounds in the coffee are extracted. What is clear, at least in my tests, was that 7 bars was the sweet spot in terms of both flavor and extraction. Those of course are linked to a certain extent, but considering each pressure produced extractions well into 19% and only varied by just over half a percent, it can't all be chalked up to just that slightly higher extraction. Which also should serve as another reminder that the extraction alone shouldn't be looked at as the marker for a quality shot. But considering how long I've been brewing on 6 bars, I wasn't incredibly surprised by this outcome, yet a couple of things did surprise me. One was how big of a taste difference one bar can truly make, especially in the lower pressure ranges as the 5 and 4 bar shots ended up tasting very harsh and sour. But also how the 3 bar then flipped back into being palatable, and it closely resembled the flavor of a longer ratio pole, like that of a Lungo or a Lange. Lastly, when dialing in low pressure shots, I found myself having to make the grinds finer to extend the shot times. This feels counterintuitive, because it seems like more pressure would travel faster through the puck. But after digging around a bit, I found that lower pressures create less agitation, which means less fines migration, which means less resistance. So this does allow you to grind finer, increasing the surface area with the grinds touching the water, which in turn has the potential to increase extraction. These experiments also drove home the role low pressures play in pre-infusion and pre-brewing in terms of cleanliness, but also in terms of flavor and extraction, as it truly does allow you to get the most out of your coffee. As always, I will say that videos like this are intended to be informational, but also inspirational. I don't want y'all to take my word for it and then move on with your day. I want y'all to get thinking, get experimenting, try this out for yourself, and find out what works best for you, your coffee, and your palate. But with all that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on espresso brew pressure? Do you think 9 bars is still the ideal? Do you think that 3 bars is still espresso? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. And a big thank you to this month's Patreon supporters, Stephen, Claire, Sam, Bound Coffee, Spookus, Noel, Cheryl, Tom, Sean, Horace, and Roe, John K, Ads, Josh, Corey, Tim, Jason, Jeffrey, Jeff, Mike, Brian, Brandon, Tyler, JRC, Absolute, Stephen G, Marco, Lord Bumbley, Arthur L, Techcom Advisors, Happy Camper, Devo H, Ben K, Monster04, Bruce, Kyle, Lilac, NK, Brooks, Henry, Sam, Nano Roastery, Pat, Sue, and Hexagram, Jr., Sergey, Matthew, Miroslav, Melkonig, Schlack, Shrey, Stephen, Andrew, Pedro, Rami, and Daniel, and of course, a big thank you to the barista and bar back tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week. My blog at Spromethius.com. My coffee at LittleGiant.coffee. And as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.